Our first program is on similarity, all about things that have the same shape but are different sizes. With our trusty expand array, we can change the size of any geometric object. It doesn't matter where we aim it, the center of scaling can be anywhere. The scaled triangle is still the same shape. And all the angles stay the same. This gives a nice proof that the angles of a triangle always add up to a straight line, 180 degrees. Just shrink the triangle down to nothing and all you have left is the angles. Another thing about similar shapes, ratios of corresponding sides are the same and internal ratios are the same. The Greek mathematician Thales used this to find the height of a column by comparing shadows. These two triangles are similar, so ratios of lengths are equal. Just pick a time when the shadow of Thales' staff is equal to its height and the column shadow equals its height. You can also scale three-dimensional objects. But when you do, you multiply the volume by the scale factor three times, and areas by the scale factor twice. Now the weight goes as the cube of the size, and the cross-sectional area is the square, and that's how we can get rid of our giant bugs. We just point out to them that their legs are proportionately too thin to hold them up. The circumference of any circle is a little more than three times its diameter. In other words, the ratio of circumference to diameter is about 3.14, a fundamental constant of nature called pi. The area of a region inside a circle is some number times r squared. This factor, a, is another fundamental constant. Guess what? It's the same value, pi. Why is this? Let's unwrap half the circumference for reference. Then chop the disks into sections I would say pie slices, but I'm too nice. Now rearrange them into a sort of parallelogram. Make the sections smaller and smaller with more and more of them. The parallelogram slowly becomes a rectangle. Height is r, width pi r, half the circumference. Area, pi r squared. And yes, I have heard the one about pi r round. Let's try it another way. Slice the disc into concentric rings and pull them out straight. Make the slices narrower and narrower and you get a triangle. The altitude is r, the base equals the circumference, two pi r, so area, half the base times the altitude, is pi r squared. The digits of pi never repeat. One of the most practical applications of supercomputers to date has been to calculate the one billionth digit of pi, a truly transcendental experience. We won't go that far here, it's nine. Pi shows up wherever circles do, in the areas and volumes of surface of revolution. But it also shows up in places where circles are not so obvious. Suppose you decide to drop a needle on a floor with floorboards twice as wide as the needle length. It can land crossing a line or not. The probability that the needle crosses a line is one over pi. Here's a weird one. Put a yellow dot on each grid point where the X and Y coordinates are relatively prime. Another way of saying this is, put a yellow dot at each grid point that's visible from the origin. The dark dots are hidden behind the bright ones. In the limit, the probability of seeing a grid point is six over pi squared. Pi has something to do with prime numbers. 
What's up next? Future programs will deal with things like the shapes of polynomials and trigonometric functions, locus problems, platonic solids, all to show that mathematics is the second most interesting thing you can do.